my name is Hussein Sani. I'm a digital marketing executive. I've been doing this for over seven years. As developers, technology builders, and um, operators, we need to know how do we get our products and our applications, our products to the users and get them to take um, whatever action we would like them to take. You might be wondering what exactly is neuro marketing? We, are, of course, some of us know of neurology, you've probably heard of neuropsychology, but how do you now bring neuro and marketing together? Those are some of what we want to look at. Neuro Neural marketing is basically the science of getting users and consumers, thank you, to take action. And in today's world, we know that a lot of people are trying to get to the users, to the consumers. How do you target all of these people and get them to take action? That is um, basically the essence of this. All right, so very quickly, neural marketing, I just said it, the science of getting consumers to take action. We are not going to go with these textbook um, definition, but basically when you do neuro marketing, your goal is for you to stimulate people to take action, but you will not come out salesy. You don't come out as um, promoting your product, you don't come out as promoting your brand. What you want to do is you want to be able to appeal to people's emotion, you want to be able to stimulate them to take action. So this is where science meets marketing. Um, before the advent of tech marketing, digital marketing, polar marketing, and what have you. There has been the conventional marketing. And what has been done in conventional? Conventionally, you need to either do above the line marketing or below the line marketing. In above the line marketing, you get to um, do the mass media, the radio, the TV, you know, you take your jingle, your radio adverts, or all of those mass media. Below the line, word of mouth, one-on-one, -on -one. you are doing this marketing get into um, advertise and talk about your product or service to people, or you do exhibition, just like we are here at Deafest. Some of the um, brands and vendors that have exhibition stand, they are doing below the line traditional marketing. But with the advent of digital, digital now gives us a level playing ground where a lot of people cannot play. So it gives us a level playing ground where small businesses, young um, developers, young talents can come on board and start creating solutions and market these solutions competing with Goliath. Who do I call the Goliath? Those are big brands who have money to put into traditional marketing. Because if you note, traditional marketing is quite costly. You want to run um, an advert on radio, just 30 seconds. You might be told to bring 50,000 euros just for 30 seconds jingle. And for this, you would um, want to do repeated advertisement because on traditional media, you need to do your advert repeatedly for you to get results. Unlike digital, where it disseminates very rapidly, you can measure, you can see um, all of your actions. On traditional, doing traditional marketing, you need to consistently put out your content or your advert for you to get the results. That's why you see, when you are listening to a radio show or you're watching a television show, between the space of one hour for the show, they go on 15 minutes commercial break because they want to repeatedly do run those advertisements for you to see and get the result they want. When you do neuro marketing, you like I said, you are going to come out, you are also marketing to people, but you are not coming out salesy. You don't come out to tell people that, yeah, I just built an app, this is the app, and you start using it. You need to be able to stimulate their brain response to get action. There are three parts to the brain, um, as you can see. There is the neocortex where we have the new brain. That is the size of the brain where we do our rational thinking. Then we have the middle brain, which is the limbic. The limbic is where you have the emotions and feeling. And we have the um, lower part, which is the reptilian. The reptilian is like the most important part when you are doing marketing, because this is where the instincts comes into play. When you are doing marketing and your communication messages are going um, into someone's middle brain, which is the emotional, yeah, you can appeal to people's emotion, get them to take action. But the most important part of every marketing, when you are doing marketing the right way in today's world, is for you to appeal to people's reptilian brain. Because some of the um, responses that you get when you use the right messages, we'll see some of those contents now. When you use the right communication messages, you put a story to your, um, to your product or service, you get it across to people, and they want to be a part of it. Because one, you've been able to build trust. Two, you've shown that you are coming to solve their problem and not necessarily um, just put a product or service to them. Now, 
how do you now use all of the powers of targeting the reptilian brain? A report from um, an 80-year-old AVA study shows that having a sense of belonging and being in a community are what keeps people happy throughout their lives. Today, a lot of us want to be part. You know, there's even this fear of missing out. You want to always know what is happening. How can you be a part of this? That study now shows that for you to really get to people, you want to create a sense of belonging. You want to create a community around your product or service. So all of these are predators to better happiness and longevity for women today. Now, this is where community-led growth comes in. The topic for the discussion is neuromarketing and community management. We've looked at what is neuromarketing, the science of stimulating people's brain so that it could take action with your marketing. Now, when you bring in community-led growth, which is um, quite different from product-led, with product-led, you are probably just, um, your strategy is you want to create an application, you want to create um, a technology solution, you want to get it to the shelf, and you want to take it out of the shelf by telling people the products benefits, the features, and what have you. Yeah, that works. Of course, you will sell in the market. But the best way, or the future of marketing your products, your hubs, is for you to use community. Now, a lot of people feel like, um, when you want to use product-led goods, do you just go on to talk about the features, and that is it. You can now complement community. Community-led goods is like the one recommended when you're building hub, you want to create a community, you want to create um, a sense of belonging around it and gain people's trust because that is the number one thing. Now, um, when you're doing community-led good, now, there's one thing we want to take away. Community-led good does not mean that you should leave product-led good. They work hand in hand. You can do community-led good and, and use it together with your product-led good. There's something I need us to see here. So these are some of the ways that you can create marketing communication and move to um, a funnel. For those that are conversant with marketing, you know that when you want to do marketing, you need to create a marketing funnel, starting from um, the top and taking people to the bottom of your funnel for them to take action. It starts from awareness. What marketing communication content um, adverts are you showing to people to get them aware about your brand, about your product or services before you take them to the consideration stage? Now, um, what are some of the content that you can use in the awareness stage, which is the first part of your funnel. One, you can use content around um, being, say for example, you are building um, a PHB sandbox, or you are building an application for developers to be able to, to be able to make, to make that work faster. What you can do is you can create a community, and I think we know of some of the big corporations doing that today. Google is a big example of using community to market their products. Now, when you do community, when you create a community for your products, for your brand, for your services, it helps people to gain your trust. By gaining their trust, you can now go on to nurture those people and market to them. I don't know why this pointer is um, malfunctioning. I want us to take that marketing funnel before we go into some of these stats. All right. Please stay in Jesus' name. Amen. Aha. So now, um, after leaving the awareness stage, which is where you put out a lot of content to get people to know about your brand, you need to now go to the consideration stage. When people get to know about your brand, how do you develop their interest? How do they get to know that, yes, this is the right code or this is the right service for them to use? The best marketers are the ones that are able to move people from awareness, consideration, conversion, and retention without spending a lot. In neuromarketing classes, we talk about how do you stimulate the brain without spending a lot because you've invested in your awareness and the messaging you are passing across in your awareness are not messaging that are promotional. When you are doing neuromarketing, marketing, it's just when you do content marketing today. When you talk to content marketers, they tell you that when you do content marketing, you just use your content to inform people, to inspire people, to educate people, and to entertain people. You don't use your content marketing to promote. But you know that the end goal of your content marketing is for you to get results. It's for you to get conversions. But the way you craft your messaging, it goes a long way to tell you the results that you get. Now, um, so there is a community growth loop that I want us to look at, from where you create your content in the awareness stage, 
you want to get a lot of engagement on it and then gain trust, which is the most important thing when you are doing marketing. And to gain this trust, you need to be able to stimulate people's reptilian section of the brain. Because it is in the reptilian section of the brain that people tend to now take trust their instinct, go on to build trust in a brand, in a product or services. So from there, you go all through the circle and the way to do this is to bring the brand community. Create a community for your brand, create a community for your product and get people to start talking about it, get people to build that trust, create a relationship with people. Um, so we'll just go over this very quickly. These are some of the growth, um, community-led growth marketing stack. You have member groups, so you could create member groups for your product or service. Um, you could have newsletters where you keep people, you give out value to people for free. Just get them to know that, yes, this is what your brand stands for. This is what you are bringing to the market. This is how you can better their lives. You could also have podcasts, audio content. There are various forms of content that um, time will not allow us to go into. But audio contents are quite big today. You could start telling people about your products without being salesy. Just have a podcast where you bring on probably key personalities in your industry or niche. Let them talk about the different subject matters in the industry. By so doing, you are building relationships. You are getting people to know about your brand. And a lot of all of the others, community events, these are very important. Today, after COVID, the human um, nature now wants to belong to the community. You wants to be seen. You want to now go out to say that, yes, I'm part of something. So if you have community events, it's going to really put you out there and a host of all of these other um, goods marketing stacks. Um, so what is the long and short of what I've been saying? Community-led growth is not an how to the hold in with the new concepts. You need to be able to build a community around your brand and still talk about the product benefit, the features of your product, your brand, and get people to know it. But the way to do it is for, is for you to combine community-led growth and product-led growth. Um, so these are about seven key steps that you could take. Set metrics for success. When you're creating a community, for whatever community or member group that you're creating, the first thing you want to do is to set metrics for success for you to know, okay, how many people are coming into our community on a regular, at regular intervals? How do we get them to engage, to interact? How do we measure that, yes, these people are not um, living, or what is the showing rate? I don't want to start calling a lot of all of these um, marketing or technical terms, but yeah, set metrics for success. You know why you are creating the community. You want to be able to use the community to market your product or service. When you have the community on whatever um, channel or platform, you need to set metrics. That's the first thing. Then two, introduce guidelines and monitor closely. Today, we have the good side of the internet, and unfortunately, we also have the bad side. You need to be able to moderate your communities. So you need to set guidelines that would guide all of the members of the community and monitor closely so that you know what is happening within the community. Then the third one, I think I've mentioned this severally, give out value consistently. Let people know what you are bringing to the market and communicate the value of your brand without coming out salesy. The fourth one, encourage networking within your community. You create a community, you set the guidelines, you know what your metrics for success are, for you to continue to get results, you need to give out value consistently and encourage people to network. Let people start working together, collaborating and networking to move further in their, either their career or their life. That way, you are giving out value. And in return, people already see you as a community that they could always um, go to get value and they would also be prompted. They would definitely want to give out to that community because it's a give and take. Now, um, the fifth one, host regular meetups. Um, I think I've already mentioned this. It could now be physical. You could have it as virtual conferences or webinars. The sixth one, keep your community warm. And what do I mean by keeping your community warm? A lot of people might um, easily lose out from the message of your community if what you always just come to say is, hey, um, today is Monday, Motivation Monday, blah, 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 quotes. Some of us are wise, every other person over our wise, so said a philosopher. So you can go on and start motivating people, start giving them all of those motivational quotes. But you need to keep your community warm. Reward people for their contribution. Get people to start 
um, bringing others in, and in return for that, incentivize all of these processes so that people know that, yes, this is a community where they are getting value. They are also now um, getting reward for some of the actions that they take. And um, lastly, cultivate success stories. By the time you do all of this, you have people talking about your community, saying that, ah, I joined this community two years or even six months after joining, I got this um, particular job, I was able to finish building this particular technology product, I was able to move further in my career, I was able to do this, I was able to do that. When you cultivate all of these success stories, you cannot use it to market your product, market your brand further, and then you can repeat all of this. This talk can be found online at bitly bit.ly slash deathfest2022 new marketing. I want us to take out two things. If you've not been listening, just take out two things from this particular section. One, value. Of course, you are creating a product, you are, creating, um, you are developing a service to give value to people, but you still need to be able to show to people that you are not necessarily bringing out these technology solutions, creating these products or service because you want to make money, even though we all know that many, many of the people um, going into building technology solutions, well, maybe not many, some are in for the money, but you need to be able to give out value and communicate your messaging so that you can build trust. Um, there was one particular video that I was meant to show to show us how words appeal to people's emotion. There's a way you can tell someone that I am blind, please help me. And another person will tell the person that it's a beautiful day and I can't see it. There are two different words. One is coming outside to say that I'm blind, oh, please help me. Yeah, some people will probably give the person money. The other person is now appealing to the person's emotion by saying that it's a beautiful day and I can't see it. That way, you have appealed to that person's emotion and you are able to get them to take action. Thank you for listening. So, um, do we have questions? I could take one or two. What do you think are the strategies for growing um, a YouTube channel? All right, next question. Welcome. So, um, if you want to grow a YouTube channel, of course, there are different strategies that you can use. Um, although this talk was not, you know, suited or tailored for that, but one thing you want to also do is to build a community. Just like I've said, you can use community-led goods to also grow and build your YouTube channel. What are you talking about on your YouTube channel? What particular niche are you serving? Look at people who are interested in getting video content in that particular niche. Create a community and start giving them value. Before you drop videos, ask questions, get people to interact, talk about some of the um, pertinent issues in that particular niche that you have chosen for yourself. By the time you start building all of those engagements, people will know you for who you are and then you can start doing your promotions on that channel. Of course, there are other strategies, but that's just one. Um, another thing is, when you are doing marketing, you can do organic and you cannot complement it with paid. You know that today a lot of people still do paid to complement their organic marketing. You can also look into that to, to get your um, results. Any other? All right, so thank you all for listening.